I'd like to welcome you to the Surfray sponsored webinar on SharePoint Document Library Organization Made Simple. My name is Josh Noble and I'm co-author of the book Pro SharePoint 2010 Search. I'm also a search consultant with Surfray, which is the provider of the Ontolica search enhancement for SharePoint. In previous webinars, we've looked at different ways to manipulate the Search Center in SharePoint. And to see any of those past webinars on the subjects regarding Search, uh, such as manipulating the refinement panel, uh, displaying custom properties in the results set, or displaying ratings, make sure to check out our recorded webinars at surfray.com. Some of the subjects, such as displaying ratings or uh, adding metadata columns, are actually uh, things that we'll build upon here within this webinar. So if you've missed those, make sure to check those out. Uh, for this webinar, we're going to explore document libraries, which is something that we haven't looked at a lot previously in other webinars. The timing of this webinar is really appropriate, uh, as are two new Ontolica modules, Ontolica Library Preview and Ontolica Aggregate, will be generally available when this, within the month. We've had really great success uh, with our beta program of both Ontolica Library Preview and Ontolica Aggregate, and uh, we'll actually spend some time looking at Library Preview uh, near the end of the webinar. But make sure to check out surfray.com if you're interested in uh, seeing some additional videos about that or uh, getting a demo or even doing a trial of any of those solutions on your local uh, machine. So as you can see from our agenda, we're going to look at several different ways to organize content within SharePoint document libraries. For this webinar, we're not going to get into topics such as uh, where you should actually create document libraries themselves or how you should structure data within your taxonomies. Uh, if we did that, with this webinar would be extremely long. Uh, so we do have uh, upcoming webinars that are on subjects like that, so make sure to check out the events page on surfray.com to find out when those will be. We're specifically for this webinar going to look at how to work with uh, different views within document li libraries and how to organize, organize content so that it can be accessed and, and viewed in a more meaningful way. Here we're going to look at a couple different ways and, and again most of this is going to have to do with views in SharePoint document libraries. So we're going to look at how to add columns that you've already made to an existing view in a SharePoint document library. So if you just have additional metadata columns and you want to expose those to views that have already been created, how to do that. We're going to look at how to create a new view that filters for items to only be returned that meet specific restrictions. So only returning items that uh, return back uh, where ratings are over three, uh, three out of five, or uh, where a particular property meets a particular uh, option. So there's different ways you can do that, and we'll look at uh, it ways that uh, you might want to apply that later. And then we'll look at how to create a new view within a document library that uses the grouping feature. And f for many of you, uh, that is kind of like a tree view. So you might find that out on uh, things such as knowledge base sites. But we'll look at uh, exactly what I mean by grouping in document libraries. And after we get, th get through that, uh, we'll then look at uh, a couple things that you can do with ontology a library preview. So we'll look at how to add document previews uh, to views within uh, within your SharePoint document libraries using Ontolica Library Preview. And then we'll look at different little ways that you can edit the first page preview settings in Ontolica Library Preview. Because anybody that's used Ontolica before knows that it's it's really flexible. So there's uh, quite a, diff a few different ways that you might want to customize that based off of your particular set of needs. So with that, let's jump into my SharePoint environment and uh, look at what we can do in document libraries. So now we're in a SharePoint 2010 document library. And again, I should note that for this webinar, uh, we'll be looking at a document library that's already been created and seeded with content. And I realize that some of you that are watching might be interested in how to actually create a document library in the first place, uh, how to move content between document libraries, and how to reliably manage versioning between different document libraries. For anybody that's interested in that subject, I'll be hosting a webinar all about that on September 
September 16th. Make sure to sign up for that webinar at surfray.com. And during that webinar, we'll actually also be able to take a look at Ontolica Aggregate and at how that allows you to control version and control the way that content is viewed uh, when it's placed around different areas of your taxonomy. For this webinar, again, we'll be interested in what we can do to organize document libraries once it's been created and seeded with content. And right now, you can see I just have a very plain document library. And while this is very useful, it's about the equivalent of a shared folder or a network drive at this point. Uh, it looks a lot like just a Windows Explorer browser. And if this is all that you really wanted, then you probably wouldn't have gone to the trouble of rolling out SharePoint in the first place. But this document library doesn't have to be plain. It can have a lot of different views that make it much more useful. Views are accessed up here, and these actually allow me to specify the type of content that's shown in my document library. They allow me to control how it's sorted, uh, what sort of metadata it's displayed, and a variety of different other types of organization options. And views are what allow me to change a document library from looking something like this to something like this with different metadata columns and, and previews as we'll see later with, uh, with Ontolica uh, library preview. They also allow me to get things that are viewed like this, which we'll look at again, uh, later as how to add groupings. And this allows me to actually do grouping based off of different bits of metadata uh, in kind of a tree structure like that to uh, drill in into different content structures there. As an administrator, views allow me to change how my users see their content. And as a user, I can also create my own custom views to change how I see my own content. So if I only want to see the metadata columns for uh, document names, last modified date, and rating, then I can see that without extra junk on the page. And in the example I'll show you a little later, if you only want to see products, for example, that are rated above three stars that have that are considered to have very high quality, I could make property restrictions around that as well uh, that allow me to view only that sort of content. So let's take a look at how I can actually manipulate these views. And to do that, I'm going to hop to a uh, plain webinar library that I've just created so I haven't done any created any of these previous views on here so let's jump over there now and I'm gonna do that here on the left hand side of the screen clicking on uh, this other library webinar library so here in this uh, webinar library that I've set up, uh, you'll notice that I just have a plain view that's uh, that's coming back here. This is just kind of the default view that you would get in base uh, SharePoint. And fortunately, when I was uh, making this, I, I did copy over content from another document library and preserved a lot of the metadata there. So we don't need to spend a bunch of time in this webinar learning how to actually add metadata. Uh, again, if you want to learn how to copy content from another document library, sign up for our uh, webinar on September 16th on that, uh, that subject, and you can find that on surfray.com. And if you want to actually know how to add metadata columns, check out the quick tip number two that we've already posted on our tech blog on surfray.com. So finally how to actually edit the views here. Uh, we'll jump up here to this library tools right here. And I mentioned again that I have other metadata columns I've already created. And right now I'm just on my standard default uh, all documents view. So I just want to edit that view. I'm just going to click on this modified views right here. And we'll notice that I have a lot of other different columns that are just not displaying right now. And when you create a new document library, these are just the basic columns that you'd usually get. But let's show everything else that I've created I've added in here for custom columns. Let's look at dream length and dream quality, dream subject, dreams. Uh, we'll hop down here, we'll throw in ratings. And in addition to that, let's actually change around how these show up on the page. We'll notice it says position from uh, from left so you can actually uh, numerically choose where you want these to show up so for example if I want dream subject to show up um, as space number five here I can do that I just click on the item next to dream subject 
and choose 5 there. And we want ratings to show up at the end there. Maybe I want dreams to show up as item, item 6 on the list. So now I've just checked which particular uh, columns that I want to show up, and I've chosen uh, the order I want those columns to appear, and that'll all be updated when I click OK. So here I can just scroll back up to the top of my page, because it's all I want to do at this point. I just want to click OK. And now we'll notice that uh, in my default view here, I have a lot of additional uh, fields that I'm able to see, a, a lot of additional columns. So that's easy enough at that point. We just uh, we already have an, a view that we have already created. And we just want to add some additional columns. Now let's go a step further. Maybe I want to create a second view for my users to pick that doesn't show everything. Maybe I'm working with a team that is highly specialized, and they're really specialized in selling high-quality dreams. Uh, I think you've probably noticed at this point that this uh, site kind of has that theme all around it. But uh, for this view, I want to see only items where the dream quality uh, is set to great. So we notice here that I see dream quality, and I have some that are set to great right here. So I only, only want to see items that are set to great, and I only want to see items where the rating is above 3. And if you want to see how to actually add these ratings, if you're not sure how to do that, again, we have a full webinar all about that that you can see on surfray.com. But here we're going to create a new view. I'm just going to go back up to my library tools, and instead of doing modified view, I'm going to do create view. And here I can choose a couple different views. Uh, if you have the type of information in this library that's more like a calendar, you could do that. Data sheet, uh, data sheet views are uh, kind of like creating a spreadsheet view where you can actually con copy content out. But here we're just going to do a standard view. And we're going to call this view high quality dreams. And just like before, I can go down and I can choose the type of information that I want to show on this. So I really don't care about modified or modified date. I really don't care about the subject in this case. I'm really only interested in a couple things. Let's say I care about dream length, dream quality, and the ratings field. So here, I'm going to just set those and then I'm going to scroll down my page. We'll notice that I have some various different options here. I can change how my columns are sorted by default. So do I want my items to show up in ascending or descending order? And what, co what particular columns do I want it to be sorted by? And so you can add a couple different columns and the way they're sorted and the order they are. So sort by this column first, then sort by this column. And that's pretty easy stuff and you can play around with that. Uh, in this case, I want to actually cr set a filter. I only want to show items that meet these two parameters. We need to show items that only have a dream quality that is great. And by setting that, you can obviously do an and or or. They also need to have a rating that's greater than 3. You'll notice from this drop down here, we have a lot of different options equal to, greater than, less than. Uh, we'll actually do, instead of doing greater than, let's actually do greater than or equal to, just in case somebody's done three stars exactly. And if I want to add more uh, filters here, I could do show more columns and add additional filters, but I think two is enough for this particular view. And then here, we're just going to double check some other things. Uh, I'm going to want to use this inline editing later, so I'm just going to check that now while we're on this page. And I could have some other different settings, but let's just do this basic ones now. We'll click OK. So now I see that I have a custom view where I'm only showing name, dream length, dream quality, and rating. And I probably didn't even need to show dream quality here because I've already specified the only dream quality that can come back needs to actually be great. Uh, so I probably could have gotten away with just seeing dream length and rating. But now I'm seeing a much more specified view that's meaningful for me if I'm only looking for items where my rating's over 3 and my dream quality is great.